This week, we have spent a lot of time as a family. Everybody has been with me all week, and all my grandkids. And we've spent a lot of time going through family pictures, getting ready for the slideshow. And it was like my life flashing before my eyes. And it helped to remind me of all the wonderful things we've done as a family and all the wonderful, wonderful times that LeBoy and I had and shared. That was something that he always was in very much of control. Um, <laughs> He very much guarded our time together as a family. He was, he didn't like outside intrusions. And he made sure that he spent every moment with us and, and did wonderful things with each one of us. Um, we were the most important thing to him. His family, his children, his grandchildren, his parents and his siblings. They all meant the world to him. As Jody already talked about, <laughs> the boy loved to play games. And I too was safe place <laughs> with my kids that that passed down and I got to be safe base and I was so grateful for that. <laughs> um, he loved to play, he loved to tease. And Jody is right about that glint. And something about his mouth, too, always gave it away for me. I always knew there was something he was thinking about. And he was just about ready to pounce. <laughs> it's that mouth. Um, but most of all, he loved to teach us the gospel. He loved to teach the children the gospel of Jesus Christ. Nightly prayer, nightly scripture study, family home evening. And when they got older, he was so much enjoyed the time that they had questions of their own. And then we could sit and talk about the principles that were being taught in the scriptures. And we learned so much from him. He was a loving husband and father, his son, and he was a good friend. And he met so many of you just recently. And he loved each one of you. He often commented to me about all the good people that were coming to see him. And how it encouraged him. I'm grateful for my testimony of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I know that God lives. I know that Jesus is the Christ. I'm grateful for the plan of salvation and the plan of happiness that I know that one day I will be able to be with him again because families are forever. I know that this church is true. And I'm grateful for all the many blessings that I have received in just being a member of this church. I'm grateful for the spirit that has been with me this week, that has strengthened me and buoyed me up. I'm grateful that I know that my God loves me and he cares about me too. And that I know that he's here for me. And I want to say thank you again 
to all of you who have come today, and all of you who have given me a hug and shook my hand and given me your best. I am so grateful for that, and I will remember this always. And I thank you for it. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we've been told we have one minute. <laughs> I'll do my best. Because <laughs> if we all have just one minute or two minutes, that's 22 minutes. <laughs> so we didn't want to keep you too long. I wrote down my thoughts, um, and I'm probably just going to read it. But first and foremost, I want to thank you all for coming from far distance. You know, a lot of you have come at great sacrifice to mourn and honor the loss of our father. Dad, if you ever were around him long enough, always introduced himself by liking himself as a joke. And he always says, not because he felt the Lord was unfair to him, but because he said, my daughters are fairest in the land. <laughs> <laughs> he always had a way of buoying those up around him. Though my father only claimed his fair daughters as the key factor that made him like unto Job. I witnessed that Dad was much more like unto Job of old than he would ever admit to being. Dad liked Job. He had complete confidence in the Lord. He testified of the shortness of life. and understood how this life is a time to prepare to meet God again. He did this with all of his might, mind, and strength. And anyone who knows him knows that to be true. Just as Job, dead tirelessly, sought the Lord and asserted his own righteousness. Dad's conviction and courage to stand for righteousness, though he was defiled and mocked and eventually slain. He had never, not once, abandoned his trust in the Lord. When facing my own trials, he often would quote Job chapter 1, verse 21. Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I turn, return and thither. The Lord giveth, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This is his legacy. I just wanted to share a little bit about watching Dad on the inside. My dad was a very diligent man. Every morning he woke up early. Right now in life, family is meaning more and more and more. Family and faith, our posterity, and our history. It means a lot more than I think we understand. And freedom, liberty why we're here and where we're going, where we came from it all. 
it's all the most important stuff. And I share that with you, with my testimony of our Savior Jesus Christ, that He lives. And then I know we'll see our Father again. He's just beyond the threshold. I want to read a little poem that bring me, brings me a lot of comfort, knowing that he's just in the other room, on the other side of the death door. It says, Grief is a narrow thing, tied against my breath, begging an answer to unanswerable death. I'm remembering the sunrise. I saw the bright, quick streams of light sing gold across the sky. And it came to me then, how essential is the night? For only from the dark do we know dawn at all. The memory lets one small solace in. If we must endure an end to know the endless. Oh, gladly, I will let you go. That when I see you standing at the door to that more permanent place, how quickly I'll recognize the eternal in your embrace. And I can't wait for that embrace, Dad. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thanks for helping me grow tall. <laughs> there's, there's something that all of us really could agree about our dad, and that was that he was such a comforter to each of us. In our moments of hardship or weakness, he was always there to extend a warm embrace and to just hold us. And it's just with the way things turned out, I'll always have a grain in my mind my father's last moment here on earth. And the hardest part for me about it is there was nobody there for him. <laughs> nobody is there to hold him in their arms. The one who held me. But I know, I absolutely know, that was such a short moment. And his Father in Heaven was there to bring him home with that same new grace. And I'm so grateful for my Savior Jesus Christ who has made that possible. I know that families are forever. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, but then. Uh, <clears throat> several years ago, my dad shared this quote with me. Um, it says, A good man draws a circle around him, and in it he cares for his family, his wife, and his children. A great man draws a larger circle, including his brothers, his friends, and protects them as he would his family. But then there is a rare man who has a special destiny. His circle extends beyond boundaries to include the world of innocents who lack the will to defend themselves. And I think it's quite evident who my dad was. And when he shared this quote with me, I, I didn't really like it because I understood that it often drew my dad away from us to help so many other people. And I'm so grateful for my dad. I love him very much, and I miss him. But I'm so grateful for everything.